I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer at Gold Derby, and I am joined today by Hunter Schaefer, the star, co-producer, and co-writer of the Euphoria special, F Anyone Who's Not a Sea Blob, Part 2 Jewels, with whom I will primarily speak about her work as a writer today. So, Hunter, the second season of Euphoria was originally scheduled to start production last spring, but then the pandemic hit, and production was delayed indefinitely for a while. Yes. And then Sam Levinson, your, the show's creator, came up with the idea of having these two specials. How did mm -hmm. you and Sam settle on using this opportunity to not only dive into a full-blown character study of your character, Jules, but to essentially retell some of the uh, main events of season one through her lens? Yeah, um, it, it, it sort of happened pretty, pretty naturally uh, in that uh, even before the conception of these episodes uh, and in the strange isolation of quarantine and scrambling to find things to keep each other occupied with, uh, um, Sam and I were on the phone pretty often. Uh, we have a pretty consistent exchange of ideas, music, etc. Um, and uh, and um, and so uh, when by the time he had started uh, brainstorming uh, for these kind of more condensed episodes, um, uh, I mean he he did Rue's episode first which um just also was one of my favorite episodes of euphoria i think ever so far it was a masterpiece in my opinion uh uh he had also started talking about ideas for um one focusing on jewels as well and uh and uh so following us just playing around with writing and ideas for other stuff for a little bit uh, uh we eventually fell into conversations about what that episode might look like for jewels and uh and kind of talking about uh where we left her off as a character and uh and it also kind of strangely coincided with a very random viral uh um, thing on Twitter uh, about Jules uh, um, uh, being some sort of villain maybe in the show uh, which I think uh, had us both feeling some type of way about how she was perceived by uh, by a good chunk of the audience and uh, and so through the sort of um, just like defending her for the sake of like making each other feel better as people who love that character dearly. I think we also just um, started dialogue that eventually kind of sounded uh, like dialogue. And, and, uh, and at some point within that conversation, he was just like, yo, this kind of sounds like dialogue. Like, do you want to write this together? And I was like, absolutely yes i do um um and and despite not really knowing or having training in uh screenwriting um you know i i, I took my little shonda rhymes master class uh before this uh before we started writing and and uh and had been playing around with just writing uh just playing around with script writing a little bit before then and, and it all just kind of uh fell into place timing wise and um and uh so when those jewels conversations started uh i think we had um a first draft of the episode within like a week and um and uh, yeah I, I mean of course it kept evolving from where we first started off but that's kind of how it was catalyzed and uh you weren't just the co-writer in this episode but you were practically in every frame of, of this episode so how did it influence your writing process knowing that you were actually going to play these scenes and you were going to uh, perform these lines of dialogue that you yourself wrote or did you try to keep these uh worlds completely separate uh in the process um i i definitely found it a bit impossible to to keep the writing process and 
the production process uh, that, that I was also now involved in and, and then the uh, acting process, which would follow, uh, they all feel so tied into each other, especially having done those in, in the sequence of the creation of the episode. It, it, it all feels so um, tied together, particularly compared to filming season one, where my main focus was just uh, over the eight episodes, uh, um, really getting to know Jules and, and have her world become uh, bigger and more vivid to me every time I inhabited her on screen or in front of the camera. Uh, it, uh, it was, uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, at least from an acting perspective at first of, uh, of literally writing the whole episode together with Sam, uh, because, uh, in, in that process, a lot of the work that I would have to do as an actor was already accomplished in uh in being familiar with the lines and the intention behind them and what that was uh intended to uh mean or come across as um uh like all of that work was kind of already done which is usually something I think you have to do as an actor if you're just handed a script on your own that's like part of your work so in one way it was a lot more work but in another way it uh it all flowed pretty nicely together and uh and definitely makes me more excited about uh being involved in that whole process uh um more often in the future whether it's on euphoria or or uh, just whatever other projects i'm going to be engaging in in the future um, I really, really enjoyed it just uh, as a primarily visual thinker, as someone who's trained as a visual artist and, uh, and someone who thinks um, from a more like uh, creative standpoint than, uh, than like interpreting a script that's already been written, which was also great, but, but, but I mean, uh, just a completely new level of of uh, like subsuming into the work uh, with with that sequence. It felt really good. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the centerpiece for this episode is uh, Jules' first uh, therapy session, which takes place in the aftermath of uh, Jules getting off uh, or getting on the train by herself in the season one finale without Brew. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this episode really dives deep uh, into their relationship by revealing just how much of a burden Jewel feels like Jules feels like she's carrying in this relationship. So mm -hmm. could you talk me through the intricacy of this relationship and uh, what was important to you as the writer uh, mm -hmm. to really explain in that regard in these 49 minutes that you had? Um, yeah, I mean, I, that was definitely a big chunk of what we explored, but uh I also love the epi episode for the way that it, it flows uh, between and, and sort of connects via multiple threads, uh, like that uh, situation with Rue and uh, her, the history with her family and, and uh, how uh, falling in love and essentially being catfished by uh, this evil uh man uh nate uh um i mean it, it it all connects pretty deeply and i think affects each other in some sort of weird domino effect and uh and so it was really nice to also as a processing moment for just someone who inhabits that character to realize or to remind myself how much this girl has been through since uh the pilot of of um, uh, season one. And then right. we get this line where mm. she says that there's a difference between thinking about and actually hurting yourself, but that mm. this gap is starting to really close for her. Could you mm. elaborate on the meaning behind that sentiment and how it was just writing something, lines uh, filled with so much meaning? Yeah, 
I mean, I, uh, that's also something that I think we can look all the way back to the pilot of season one, two, and that, uh, and that like half of her scenes uh, are uh, two like pretty, um, pretty prominent scenes for her in the pilot when we first meet her are, are in one way or another uh, cases of like some form of self-destruction uh, and uh and also it simultaneously forms of affirmation for her which i think in in some ways is parallel to her relationship with rue in that uh in that she has never felt the kind of love she shares with rue before or or um uh in some ways felt so safe and so seen by someone who simultaneously is is um uh the source of a lot of pain and anxiety for her uh and that those exist right next to each other um but uh, as far as like uh the the hurting herself aspect goes i think it's it's uh it uh, her character um in some ways relies on relies on um those actions that kind of fall under that category as as a release, um, a way of coping, um, and and in uh, and because she's trying to cope, I think in hopes of maintaining the beautiful parts of those relationships, uh, because I, I, more than anything, I don't think she wants to to lose them, particularly with what we learned about. Uh, the ways she might have felt abandoned earlier on in her life, you know, um, it's, and, and, and I think especially uh, with where we're at with her right now, um, her relationship with Rue feels um, impossible to lose in some senses. And what does it mean to you that Jules approaches her gender being trans from a more emotional, spiritual uh, standpoint, rather than for instance, a political one, which we really get to see in this episode as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's something. Uh, it's something I've talked a lot about with uh, other uh, close trans people I have in my life, uh, and particularly also as um, I think like internet and social media politics. Uh, um, uh, progresses and and uh accelerates and comes up with new um new ways to identify yourself or or um or um ways of like like identifying yourself or placing yourself within like the lgbtq community um uh or labels so it just comes down to labels um which we I, I think we did everything we could to avoid in season one. Um, however, season one was also from Rue's perspective. And I think we also learned that Rue is not the most reliable narrator, uh, which we get a pretty decent sense of in Jules's episode, because there are some things that don't line up as far as the stories they they tell. Um, a lot of writers uh, talk about how the process of writing it is their own way of going to therapy. Was mm -hmm. this entire experience in a way therapeutic for you as well? I can easily 100% say uh, uh, creating this episode from, from writing it in while I was like spiraling in North Carolina in quarantine with Sam over the phone to um being flown out to LA on a two-day notice to start pre-production and be involved for the entire <clears throat> month of pre-production with Sam and Marcel and, and continuing to write uh and revise drafts with them uh all the way up into the two-week shoot it was easily 100% one of the most cathartic, like, artistic experiences I have ever had in my entire life. I don't think I've, I've, I've once 
I don't think I've spent that much consecutive time um, subsuming into one storyline uh, and, and really <clears throat> going over it that many times down to every single line and like what that means. And with, with another creator that I trust deeply in his family to me, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, the the, the uh, I feel like I processed so much from the writing to production to uh, to filming and and uh, it was therapeutic in a lot of ways because of that. that's great. Well, thank you so much for shedding light uh, on this very fascinating process and for this episode. And thank you so much, Hunter, for joining us today. To our viewers, make sure to go to goldderby.com to make your predictions. And before you go, click subscribe to watch all of our great chats with top contenders. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.